All right, this is a strength of materials problem. And here we have two pieces of metal. One is aluminum, one is bronze. And they are placed in this uh, holding container. We have a gap of 0 0.02 inches. And the initial temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to heat this uh, contraption. And in the end, in the final stage of it, we're going to have an normal force, a normal uh, stress in uh, the aluminum of uh, negative 10 KSI. And they want us to find the final temperature. So T final equals a uh, question mark. So to start the problem, we're going to kind of work our way backwards from our final stage of this situation. So right now let's uh, pretend that this thing is heated to our final temperature and th let's take a look at what's happening at that point. At that point these two pieces are extended and they are pushing against uh, the wall of its uh, this retaining container. Uh, and the way we know that it's pushing is that we are given that there is an actual compression stress in the material. So that means that it filled up this gap and it's pushing against the wall. So that would mean that our two pieces in the final stage, this is the aluminum, this is the bronze, they have some kind of a force keeping them in place. If there's normal stress, that means we have some kind of normal force on them. Let's call this a P. Okay, and since we know uh, stress, we know their area, we will know we are able to find our P. Okay, we're gonna use the normal stress formula. We're gonna use it in the aluminum piece. And that equals normal stress equals the force over the area. Over here, we're gonna use the area of the aluminum. We're gonna solve first for P, which will give us the normal stress in the aluminum times its area. We're going to plug in our values that we have and we're going to find a value of 28,000 pounds for P. Okay, let me refer to this situation before I show what's the next formula that we're going to use in the problem. This is, a, we have a metal piece that's held between two walls and if we would uh, heat this piece of metal without the walls, then we would have an expansion uh, of the material, right? Because of the heat. Now, if we have a force on a piece of material, don't look at the walls, just let's say we would have a force from the up or down, also that material would have a deformation due to the force. Now, in this situation here, this wall is holding this uh, piece of material in place. So it can't expand, can't contract. It's fixed. Therefore, whatever happens here or here, the total will be a zero. There will be no change in length. So we're gonna rely on the same kind of idea when we're working with this one. Now, here's a bit trickier because this side of the wall, so we have this aluminum, we have the bronze and we have a little gap. We know that after heating this will definitely fill the gap and start pushing on the exterior walls because we have a compression stress on the material. If it wouldn't reach all the way and we would, after heating we would still have a gap, we wouldn't have this compression uh, stress. So now I'm gonna write up the formula for the changes the, that happen with this material. So I'm going to start with the right side where this zero represents the state where we are right now. Nothing's happening to it. And here we're going to write the changes which will equal to zero. So first we are heating this material, right? So therefore we will have a deformation due to heat. So I'm going to write it here, deformation due to heat. So then, if we have a force on a material, 
that will also cause a deformation. So, after we heated it, we know that it wanted to go further, but the force kept it shorter. So therefore, minus the deformation due to the force. So, we are at this stage where the heat wanted to expand it, but the force kept it back till the walls of the container. But this is not where we started, we started here. So therefore we have to subtract another 0 0.02 inches. And now we are back to equaling 0. So after the material, it was in this initial state, so 0 change, it changed 0 0.02 inches till the wall, then it wanted to change more because of the heat, but the force kept it back to stay at the limit of the wall. Now let's uh, calculate each of these individually. I'm gonna make a little arrow here and I'm gonna calculate this over here. Change due to temperature. We're gonna use the formula. Here it is. The deformation equals length delta t times the alpha. From all these we're gonna have to, well this formula is for when we have for example one material like aluminum but here as we know we have two so therefore we're gonna have to use it with the version where we would have a sum here but since we have two of them we're just gonna write uh, the length of the bronze I'm gonna mark this with B Delta T, that's common, both of them will change the same amount of temperature, and then the alpha, again for the bronze, and then plus the same formula again, L delta T alpha, but this time L for the aluminum, delta T is the same, alpha for aluminum. There you go. Now we're going to plug in our values and see what happens. There you go, I plugged in the values. And as you can tell, we have all the values except delta t. Our delta t is unknown, but that's pretty much what we're looking for. So therefore, we're going to find the deformation due to temperature to be 3.6 times 10 to the negative 4 times delta t. And we're just going to leave delta t as a variable for now. Now we're going to proceed and we're going to take a look at our second value in this equation, the deformation due to the force. We're going to use this formula, but again, we have two materials, therefore we're going to use it twice. And first time we're going to use it for the bronze, second time for the aluminum. The force is the same for both. The length is different, so I'm going to mark length of the bronze, length of aluminum. E, again, is different. Area is different. So I'm going to mark it E for B, A for B, E for aluminum, A for aluminum. There you go. Now let's plug in our values. Okay, now I plugged in all our values, and all, as we can see in this equation, we pretty much know everything, therefore we're just going to get a nice value. Now if we take a look at our equation that we've been working with, we have this one, we have this one, 0 0.02, there's nothing we can do to it, so let's get back to it. So deformation due to temperature is 3.6 times 10 to the negative 4 and we have our variable delta t minus what we found here 25.98 times 10 to the negative 3 and minus 0 0.02 inches inches and this is equal to 0 nice equation only one variable and from here we're going to solve for delta T. With a calculator, we're going to find 127.72 degrees Fahrenheit. 
So this is our delta T. They are asking for the final temperature. Therefore, initial temperature plus delta T will give us the final temperature. Therefore, this plus the 70 degrees that we started with will give us a final value of 197.72 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is our answer. Now, this problem has a point B. This was part A, now part B. Part B is gonna uh, be asking us to find the exact length of the aluminum piece in the final stage. So, therefore, here it is. I already wrote it down. What we're gonna do is the deformation of the aluminum. We're gonna take the deformation due to heat and subtract the deformation due to the force. So pretty much this part comes from here, here, and this part comes from here. Okay, we're gonna plug in. Be careful for the delta T, use the correct one. I almost used the uh, final number that we found, but we need delta T. So plug in the values. You find deformation of the aluminum due to these two events. We have it right here. Then we're going to calculate the final length, which will be the initial length plus what we found right here. And there you have it. Final length, 16.0113 inches.